Can't wait to get my beard back. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we talk about everything that is man. Technically not everything, but most things. I am all that is man. Our topic today is toxic masculinity. Yes. And a lot of this is going to... Uh, dovetail from our episode last season on masculinity, so we'll put a link to that in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Um, As well as probably our episode on radicalism and moderates from season two. There's definitely going to be callbacks to those. And I feel like there's also a little bit of a spiritual successor to last week's topics of masks. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it's kind of weird that it all kind of meshes together. Mm. It's weird, though. When Jim first proposed we do this episode i was a little reluctant on it but as you pointed out we've been so fixated on self-reflection that it makes sense that or it it wouldn't make sense not to do it yeah so and Um, so here we talk about it yeah after after two hours of pre-show conversation (laughs) that meandered a lot (laughs) fair uh so icebreaker what is what is the the latest or or the most notable maybe we'll expand that out just to confuse the issue a bit, but instance of uh, toxic masculinity that you can think of, uh, I don't know, that you either perpetrated or experienced. Oh, well, I mean, I've, I'm definitely guilty of perpetrating it, but um, the most recent, so <laughs> jokes and illusions from the pre-show, notwithstanding, because those are definitely now more recent. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in the pre-show, I talked about how so we are filming this Monday. Uh, on Friday, so we and we are filming this just before Halloween. So on on Friday, it was the first the weekend before Halloween. So everybody comes out in their costumes, and what happens at Halloween? But natural conversations about appropriateness of costumes, aka labeling stuff, you know, slutty costumes and whatnot. And uh, one of our patrons came out dressed as the movie version of Harley Quinn. So. It uh, has a very particular uh, design aesthetic, including mm-hmm. including booty shorts, boy shorts, booty, sh- booty shorts, booty shorts, short shorts. I don't know. Anyway, so there were people at the bar. Won't name names, but there were people at the bar commenting on her on her ass after work. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is an example of it. That's most recent in my mind that wasn't perpetrated by me. Yeah, it's that element of 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 like. Um, entitling men to treat women like objects yeah. and or comment and, on yeah and, and that sort of vision of a version of slut shaming that comes out of it too mm-hmm. which is like you know the 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 idea that there there is no way for her to win mm-hmm. uh, in that uh, in that dichotomy mm-hmm. I have completely forgotten <laughs> what mine was it was like two hours ago it's very late but uh, I'm thinking back to a distinct one. Oh, there was one at a party that I was at uh, on Friday. Oh, okay. Where I got to watch a uh, a man or woman have a conversation about uh, whether or not uh, and and sort of how predatory posture is articulated between men and women. Uh, so specifically. Uh, she was talking about the uh, the Jim Carrey video that's been going viral. I'll link it in the show notes, where he sort of uh, it's a Fashion Week video. He like laughs off the red carpet by sort of preying on this reporter, mm-hmm. and one of the things he does in that video is circle her. Oh, I know what several you're times about. Yeah. he 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 circles her like making eye contact and forcing her to follow him, and the argument is that is predatory behavior, which it is. Um, and it and it really like it, it it especially emphasizes the power dynamic. He is a celebrity. She is a reporter. He is a man, and she is a woman. Because if it was a dude on that red carpet, it would be a totally different dynamic. Mm-hmm. And uh, the that is not the toxic masculinity bit. The toxic masculinity bit was where I got to watch a dude argue that this was not necessarily predatory behavior, mm-hmm. while standing up, like drawing himself up into his shoulders. Um, Pointing his finger, uh, you know, inches from from this person's face and raising his voice. Admittedly, they were both a bit drunk, but and I'm like, you are making an argument about how posture is not 
necessarily threatening toward women while adopting a threatening posture toward a woman. Oh. <laughs> Which I said at the time to no avail. <laughs> so what is toxic masculinity? Like when we when we talk about it, what do we what do we parse that out as? It was uh <laughs> This was a very difficult topic for me. Um, I guess the only excuse that I have, which is not really excuses, I didn't really do my homework for this. I mean, there there was probably pl- ample time for me to go and educate myself on this. So pleading ignorance is not exactly a good excuse for me. But I had a very difficult time wrapping my mind around it because I was trying to detangle it from, you know, you know, toxic masculinity and then a line and then masculinity. And then we ended up talking about is masculinity always sexism, which and you you said they're overlapping circles, but they're not completely overlapping one another. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's bound up a little bit in performative masculinity, as well as patriarchy. It's a very yeah. It's, it's almost a, like there's all these rings of gender depression that exist. It's it's almost like it's intersectional. <laughs> yeah, there's there's, there's stuff and. I say all of this, like I almost sound like I'm being coy because it sounds like I maybe know what I'm talking about. I still honestly have a hard time. I couldn't give a good definition other than like shitty behavior that guys do for no other reason than because they want to be seen as guys. But that's an example. That's not a very good definition of it. Yeah, I mean, it it it, it falls into lots of, of cases. I mean, we get uh, products that market toward toward men using using toxic masculinity things like grenade bath bombs Mm -hmm. or tactical black sunscreen or so but maybe to help the audience and i guess maybe also i'll pretend to be dumb on this one because i really am dumb like what is it about it that's toxic sure because like other than having like i'm gonna market these bro things or these i'm gonna market these things to guys in a bro way to get them to buy it. So what about that makes it toxic? So uh, th- things with, 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 with marketing campaigns, for example, is that um, they hold the idea of masculinity as antithetical to, to some to femininity. And more importantly, to a femininity that is constructed, mm-hmm. right? Like, like women aren't the ones constructing femininity for for marketers Mm -hmm. men are constructing that femininity Mm -hmm. um and we and we see that in in ads for women like find me a a razor ad for women where a lady doesn't shave a bare leg right like it's it's, it's a good example it's the the, you know like (laughs) it's this clearly constructed thing and it isn't it is it is strictly constructed um in some ways, to the advantage of men, but even even that, I think, is 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 straining it because toxic masculinity is is also toxic to men. Mm-hmm. Um, it damages the way that they articulate feelings, the way that they navigate the world, the way that they navigate their uh, relationships. And what helped me to wrap my mind around it is um, it it makes a it makes the um, a way of being the default that may that you, if you, if you don't question it like if you if you have a way of of normalizing it without questioning it then it ends up being uh, something that filters in of the way you're expected to be well and and in addition to that there's this notion of of entitlement like mm-hmm. when we look at things like sexual harassment um or or sexism what we see is an entitlement to uh, comment or act toward other people in a way, like, like in a way that objectifies them. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we think about um, adopting postures, what we see is an entitlement to uh, advance our position without thinking, for example, of, of other people's safety. Mm-hmm. So you know, or or we see the opportunity to apologize for that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Or the opportunity to not make space for other people, mm-hmm. putting yourself first. Yeah, which you may have just said. I realized now that I say it out loud, but so I mean, there's lots of ways I think to cash it out. One of the things we hit on the pre-show was the I did the straightforward idea of um, 
a lot of toxic masculinity comes down to the phrase, I decide what matters when. And, mm-hmm. and I, in this case, is like particularly men. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we can see that in male, male discourse about women's um, sexual lives mm-hmm. and sexual autonomy. Where, you know, it's good or bad based on what dudes think. Mm-hmm. Um, similarly, in, with regard to things like homophobia or transphobia, it's, you know, do, dudes decide when that's good. Like, like they, are the, they, 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 they set themselves up as, and, they, and they're part of a culture that encourages to set themselves them to set themselves up as the sort of final arbiters of this thing. Yeah. Um, you know, men uh, toxic masculinity tells men to regard themselves as the keepers of rationality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, we talked about it in the pre-show. The um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, kind of dichotomy that women are emotional beings and men are hyper rational beings. Yes, yeah, which is horseshit. Yeah, I mean. The joke I made just before filming was uh, men are rational right up until they decide that they can't help but to punch somebody because they're too overcome with rage. Men are rational right up until the point where a movie comes out that they might not like. Yeah. (laughs) Or as you said, men are rational right up until they're giant crybabies. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, but even, even then, like, like, like the, the idea of being, of being giant crybabies, like, like. We, we talk about man feels. We talked about that in our masculinity podcast. Yeah, no, man, and, man feels typically is something that uh, I kind of embrace tongue in cheek, but it's something that with, you know, my partner and I, she's mm-hmm. always, like, she'll, I, I said it in the, I'll reiterate it because it's funny to me at the very least, that when she looks at me when we're watching a movie and she goes, it's because <laughs> she knows, she knows, and she'll look like, yeah, this is one of those moments, right? I, I know she's poking fun at in good nature. She's not being mean, but and she's right on. You know, I, I sent you the the link uh, the, from the movie The Man in the Iron Mask when yep. they they do their final charge and they're you know the they're facing down a, a whole bunch of muskets and then the one captain of the guard or whatever is like magnificent valor and it's just like, <sighs> but it's but that's <sighs> the thing is, is is as a dude it, it like it tells you the kinds of the kinds of things you're supposed to have feelings about. You're supposed to have feelings about valor. You're supposed to have feelings about sacrifice. You're supposed to have feelings about uh, like protectiveness and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, what you're not supposed to have feelings about are things like intimacy, um, grief. Uh, there's a really just a powerful ass comic on the nib about toxic masculinity and grief and the way that it prevents men from grieving. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing is 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 toxic masculinity hurts everybody. It hurts it it a hundred percent hurts women and, and marginalized groups vastly more. But it also hurts regular old, old and regulars. God, why did I pick that word? But it You're hurts tired. It's okay. cishet dudesmen. Yeah, as much as as anybody because it it stunts their ability to do that. It stunts their ability to enjoy stuff. It, it actually to connect it to something else you had commented on. Um, it disconnects them from a rich vocabulary to describe their yeah. inner life. Because you, in the context of you gave it, um, you know, your inability to express desire for, you know, buying shoes or something like that. That's not gunmetal or black. Uh, but I think that I think that's a, a a micro version of the broader idea that, you know, people have rich inner complex lives and sometimes especially within toxic masculinity it becomes very difficult to parse it out oh perfect example the the meme of uh you know a gradation of color in the rainbow and then you have you know all of the individual colors that women have for it you know like lilac and everything else and on the guy's side it's red orange purple Mm -hmm. blue you know like that, that idea that there's no ability not it's not even about discrimination or discriminating between colors. Like it's in this case, it's there's there's a lack of, of nuance and, and uh, capturing complexity. So that, that's just one example. Yeah, like, and, and well, one and and masculinity tells you you shouldn't have a language for that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like guys who do have a language for that are considered feminine. Mm-hmm. And and toxic masculinity, it like again constructs feminine this sort of straw man femininity. Mm-hmm. 
and then labels it as bad. Mm-hmm. Um, when when operating sort of entirely outside of that, like that's why when we see um, like women constructing, you know, con- constructing their own femininity, constructing their own spaces, um, the the dudesmen you find in opposition to that are almost certainly shitheads. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked a bit about people uh, like, like the sort of I don't even want to call it the far end of that but things like um, uh, MGTOW men going their own way um, M- 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 MRAs men for, men's rights activists um, who who don't who don't really advocate for men's rights so much as they do you know demonstrate against women's rights mm-hmm. um, I mean we see it in uh in so the incel community, I'll try and find an article on that that doesn't take you directly there because I'd like to spare you that if I could. Yeah. Unless but, you're feeling particularly masochistic. Oh God, it's not even masochism at that point. <laughs> but uh, and we see it in in I mean, we see it in the in the 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 new rise of like right wing fascism. Mm-hmm. Is this this i this idea about how things are supposed to be that not only constructs a harmful reality for women, it constructs a harmful reality for men. Mm. Um, to say nothing of the way that it constructs and hems in and kills anybody who doesn't fall into one of those two categories. Mm-hmm. So... Another example, um, just to kind of stretch out the yeah. topic a little bit more, because it's, it's not straightforward, but... Um, if you're talking about an intersection between toxic masculinity and male privilege, the boys will be boys. Mm. And I'm not, even, and I'm not even talking about like, so there's the one side of like excusing male behavior, which is one mm-hmm. thing that you talked about in the pre-show, but even the idea of like literal boys, boys will be boys and excusing the behavior because that's just what boys do. Boys are, you know, expected and excused for, you know, rougher behavior yep. or... Yeah, like 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 these two like toxic masculinity and male privilege are super intertwined because I mean toxic masculinity is what makes dudes shitty, mm-hmm. and male privilege is what lets them get away with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's what lets them succeed. I mean, there is there is perhaps no better example of that than Donald fucking Trump getting recorded. To, to you know, confessing to a sexual assault, um, then not denying it, saying it is locker room talk, and not only, not only getting elected president, mm-hmm. but having a bunch of dudes bend over backwards to defend that remark. Mm-hmm. A bunch of dudes who like. Three years ago, two years ago, were advocating for the sanctity of marriage, or just, you know, who 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 are like nobody respects women more than us, or just bending over, just doing any kind of contortion to make that work, to cover for that. Mm-hmm. That is the definition of toxic masculinity and male privilege, but it happens at every level of society. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about the 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 ways in which. Men get away with stuff by offloading labor onto women. Mm-hmm. Um, domestic labor, uh, emotional labor. There's a there's a powerful ass meta thread that was a, it's a collection of a bunch of Reddit posts um, about emotional labor. I'll link in the show notes, but it it really digs into and and the women there really dig into sort of what they mean when they talk about emotional labor. Um, how that gets divided up, and 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 yeah, like like a lot of that falls down to not just like dudes are less mindful, which is a trope, which is a toxically masculine trope. Dudes are less mindful about housework, haha. Mm-hmm. But also, like male privilege lets you get away with that. Yeah, you know, you're like, oh, I don't have to be less be mindful about housework because even if no one is there to do my housework for me. There, there's a, there's a social, there, there isn't a social expectation that I'm going to do it. Like if I'm messy, 
when someone comes over, you know, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, you need to get a girl to clean for you. It's yeah. Like, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Or the other side of it, which we talked about is um, when I'm messy, I am I can give zero fucks, as you would say, yeah. about what anybody cares about it. Mm-hmm. And my partner, Sarah, can have the exact same attitude, but be judged entirely different than yep. I would be. So, like, if I'm a slob... Guys are slobs, whatever. And you said, like, it can be excused in a number of ways of you're too busy or, you know, oh, he doesn't have the skills or whatever. Yeah, like, you, you, you know, you, like, if, if, if men have the skills to cook and clean, it is abnormal. Yeah. I mean, it isn't necessarily bad, mm-hmm. uh, but it does depend on the nature of, of cleaning mm-hmm. or of, of, of the skills. Yeah. Um, you know, dudes are the grill masters. Yeah. Uh, I make a lot of quiche. Somebody at work commented once on seeing my quiche. They're like, oh, did your partner make that for you? I'm like, no, I made this quiche for myself, and now I'm going to eat it. It's cheese and onions and delicious. And they're like, oh, well, real men eat quiche. And I'm like, sure. But it's, I mean, it's even in that tongue in, tongue-in-cheek way where we're, we're poking fun at the idea of having, yeah. like, basic life. The quiche has four fucking ingredients. It's basic life skills. Yeah. But yeah, to close out the thought, so I can be excused for it, but if Sarah took the same attitude towards it, she'd yeah. be judged much harshly. Oh yeah, oh, and that goes for clothing, that goes yeah. for attitude. Yeah. You know, dudes dudes get away with being surly a lot more. Mm-hmm. They aren't expected to smile, they aren't expected to be pleasant. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they are, it's considered fortunate. Mm-hmm. More often than not. Mm-hmm. You know, it's considered charming. Yeah. So... What do? <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, like, that, like, really, the only point, I think the only point of talking about toxic masculinity largely is in order to do something about it. Like, my, my position toward this is super iconoclastic. Like, no, I know. I know. Mine, mine, true to form, mine's a very moderate response, and yours is I, more so, than so, moderate. And I, just, I didn't say this in the pre-show because I want to save it for the podcast. I yeah. don't think your response is moderate. No. I think that, I think that it is it is it is powerfully conservative. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I buy that. I think that so the, the example we gave in the pre-show was, you are riding in a car, with your buddy, or your buddies, and they cat call somebody, on the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. You are now in a position, to decide what you do about that, mm-hmm. and. Um, I don't think that doing nothing is the moderate response. Oh, I didn't say I do nothing all the time. Mm-hmm. It's just I pick my battles, which yeah. is the conservative side of it. Yeah, which is which is which 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 goes back to that notion of I decide what matters when. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I I cannot say that I fight every battle I find, mm-hmm. uh, but I try to fight as many of them as I can. Partly because I don't want to be the kind of person that lets that shit slide. And I certainly have been. I have been the perpetrator of that shit in the past. Mm -hmm. But also, that shit always has victims. Mm -hmm. It has victims, you know, it it victimizes women, it victimizes, you know, queer people and people of color. It victimizes the men themselves, like men themselves often. Uh, when those victims aren't available, you know, you're you're at the store and they're like, oh, I don't want to get that. That's fucking girly. And you'd be, be like, no, you get those goddamn bath bombs, man. Like, put down the grenade bath bomb. <laughs> you like like all of those people deserve to know that there are that there are people who have their back and who will who will go to bat for them. Mm-hmm. They deserve to feel safe, and they deserve to feel comfortable in who they are. And yeah, sometimes sometimes that means calling out your buddy on his fucking gross behavior but sometimes that means calling out your buddy because no dude it's okay to have feelings mm-hmm. like <laughs> these are both important like it's okay to cry at your dad's funeral man like <laughs> we're gonna hug it out <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i like i think that, that that it always needs to be answered and it doesn't need to be answered with you know, like a, a a fist fight or a long ass argument. Like it's like with with harassment shit. I mean, it can be as straightforward as being like, 
don't be gross. Like that's this is not okay. Mm-hmm. Like you are you are a dude and I am a dude and I am not letting you get away with it. Mm-hmm. You know, there are people here who are who and you know, and again it shows people that you are invested in creating a safe environment that it is not merely their responsibility to look out for themselves. But I mean, you can also just punch people in the face. I'm pretty fine with it. It is a very masculine thing to do. Listen, all right? Maybe even... Sometimes a Nazi needs a good punch. Maybe even toxically so. (laughs) It depends on the context. Yeah. Um, You know, and it depends on how far that goes. Like, sometimes it goes into... Uh, physically laying hands on people. Mm-hmm. Well, I know if I know nothing else at the bar, it's that there's a time and a place to throw down. Yep, I had to physically eject a guy from a LARP game once. Oh, jeez. Yeah, for for inappropriate behavior. Oh, that's probably a story for another podcast. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put some useful articles in the show notes. Um, we are also going to uh, put our contact info. If you want to heckle us about this on Twitter, you can find us uh, at Wootsuit or um, at our individual Twitters. You can heckle us about it on Instagram. You can even back us on Patreon and mm-hmm. then proffer your criticism, which I super look, for, look forward to do. I love hearing criticism from Patreon backers more than anything. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, yeah, if you've got any thoughts on it, leave it in the comments. Because we would certainly love to hear it. Um, we'll even read the YouTube comments. <laughs> this once. <laughs> just... Yes, share share your stories about you being shitty down below. We can commiserate on just how shitty we are in general. No, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know that that's what I want it to be about. But but share your stories about. Ways that you find to be supportive of people in those moments. So yeah, some heavy shit. It is some heavy. I'm glad we shit. finally got to it though. I'm, I'm, I've been, we've been sitting on this topic for a while, and I'm, it turned yeah. out really well. Yeah. And <laughs> we, we haven't even scratched the surface. No, and yes. and that's the thing is there's there's so much, but but what we're, we're trying. How much? How much can? Two giant dudes really dig into in 30 minutes. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. Don't be shitty. Stay awesome. Stay awesome. Today's topic, who has stolen Huck's beard? Where'd it go? <laughs> uh, all right, let's get this show on the road. <laughs>